Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today we are chatting with John Dylan Snyder III, Executive Director of Treatment Trends. John has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, John, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So drug addiction, alcohol addiction, a major, major problem throughout this country. Uh, it's received a lot of news coverage, but people don't really understand the details of how treatment unfolds within communities uh, like this in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and, and in the Lehigh Valley. Talk about the nature of the, of the problems that you confront, and then let's unpack a little bit about the kind of work that is, uh, is done by treatment trends. Sure. I mean, I think one of the big problems is stigma with our clients, um, you know, people that don't always recognize substance use disorder as a, a disease and will think that it's a fault or a character default. I mean, it's really not, it's brain chemistry disease. So, and I think that people trying to get into treatment, sometimes it's difficult. There's barriers to treatment. Um, many people in their active addiction are not looking for treatment. Um, one of the things with the huge opioid epidemic that we have going on, you're seeing large people overdosing, being revived with Narcan, um, in the hospitals, in the community. Um, and it's really brought in a, an awareness to the fact that, you know, if we have an opiate use disorder problem, but we have really have a substance use disorder problem. So I think recognizing that, finding the right places to get help. We have certified recovery specialists that are out in the community. A certified recovery specialist is uh, someone in recovery. Um, so they have knowledge of, of what the people that are going through and through their addiction. And they're out in the community trying to be proactive in telling people there is help, there's treatment available, and telling them how to access those services. Let's talk a little bit about the, the uh, biological factor uh, first, because there needs to be a really deeper, a very deep understanding of this. We're talking about people whose biology, whose brain chemistries, make them particularly susceptible to a repeated behavior, repeated experience of something that they will encounter in the course of their lives. They will take a drink of alcohol, they will um, have um, an encounter with drugs, and those people have this attribute in their biology that they didn't know before that makes them need that substance again and again and again and again. And it could be you, it could be me, but, but that is really a biological factor. Sure, and, and it doesn't start out with addiction. I mean, really it starts out with drug or alcohol use, right. and then it really becomes misuse, and then it's abuse, and then it's the chronic continuing of that that becomes the addiction where your body just craves that substance that you're addicted to, um, your brain craves that, that it's just the, the, the pathways in your brain are changed from the chemicals that you've done. So, you know, it, it really is something that you need just to feel human again. Um, and that's, there are people that they say that are more prone to addiction than others. Um, there's people that are able to stop using easier than others. Um, and it really depends on, um, factors, why did you start using, um, what are you using, type of drugs. Some drugs are easier to um, recover from than others. Um, really defects, it depends on your use. So when, when you take a look at the philosophy that, um, that wraps around your treatment, you're meeting people where they are. You're not starting off with this assumption that, that there is a defect in a person or that there's a weakness or there's some sort of a um, lack of discipline. You're taking them as a human being who walks in or who is encountered on the street and you're saying, look, there's obviously a problem here. We need to work on it together. Yeah, I mean, treatment is individualized and you really need to meet the person where they're at, find out um, where they are in stages of change. Some people are in denial and don't, won't accept the fact that they have a substance use disorder problem, or you have people that recognize it because they've hit what they call their lowest point in their life and now they're ready to make those changes. Many of our clients that we serve um, have had years and years of substance abuse and, and misuse, and they probably have not had good coping skills. They haven't really been raised correctly. So we talk about more of a habilitative nature of treatment than rehabilitative. They haven't learned those 
healthy life skills to be able to take care of themselves for a number of reasons. It could be, um, you know, homeless. It could be um, a traumatic event, things like that. So how do people come in to, how do you first encounter them? We have, um, a, basically, to access treatment, you really need to have an assessment and a determination of level of care, where you need to go in your treatment. There's assessment sites. All of the outpatient providers in Lehigh County are contracted with Lehigh County Department of Drug and Alcohol to provide assessment and then referral to treatment. Uh, we, our outpatient program is located on Walnut Street in Allentown. Um, people drop in. Um, we have assessors that will do a, a comprehensive biopsychosocial on them and then determine um, their pattern of drug use and determine what level of care they need. So and, one part of this is people walk in to you. Sure. And they say, I have a problem. Right. But there are other there there's are other, other ways. parts. We uh, there's a within the hospitals there's a host team, the heroin opioid response team. That when someone comes in the hospital overdosed, the hospitals will call the host team to come out and do an assessment um, and try to get the person into treatment that way. Um, there's people out on the street, like I had spoken before, about uh, certified recovery specialists that will tell people how to access treatment. So there will be, um, on, on the hospital side, you have people coming in for treatment, right. um, and the hospital has partnered with you and brings you in and says, you know, can you, can you help this person? Can you help this person? Mm -hmm. And then you interact with the person themselves. Then you have people who are homeless. The people that are homeless. Or on the street. That are on the streets that we're telling them. To, we, have, we go to the rescue mission. We'll go to um, different neighborhoods. Where law we know enforcement. Law enforcement. We, there's, people will do assessments in the prison if someone's in the prison for a drug or alcohol problem. Um, and then they'll, when they're being released, they'll refer them to a treatment center. And, and so uh, they, they, but everybody goes through a similar type of assessment, no matter where, where they're met. Yeah, I, I mean, our population that we serve is basically the uninsured, the underinsured. Mm -hmm. So those people that are on the public system, medical assistance, that type of thing. We do not contract with any of the private health insurance companies, but someone that would need to access that on the back of everybody's insurance card, it will tell you how to get the help for those behavioral health services. And our assessment sites, there are assessment sites within Lehigh County that can um, do the referrals for those people. Talk a little bit about how your programs, your various treatment programs uh, unfold and the partners that you uh, collaborate with as you treat. Sure, we have an inpatient program called Keenan House. It's a 95 bed inpatient non-hospital treatment center. We get referrals from outpatient programs. We get referrals from probation or parole. We get referrals from the court system. Um, we have uh, at any one time, probably about 90 people in a 95 bed facility. So it's very, very full. And they're there for anywhere from 45 days to maybe 90 days. Uh, it's a long-term treatment center, and that's 90 days is what they consider long-term treatment. Um, and then usually from there, they'll, depending on where they're at, they might step down to a halfway home. Uh, we have the halfway home in Lehigh Valley, also located in Allentown. And there, it's more of a reintegration in back into the community. So along with treatment, they'll get some life skills, they'll get some vocational stills, they'll get a resume done, and then um, towards the middle of their treatment, they'll go out and start getting a job, looking for work to get a job employment, because without a job and without a safe place to live, you're not gonna be able to maintain your sobriety. So your entire workflow is focused on first, uh, meeting people where they live, doing an assessment, then providing uh, initial uh, services that lead into uh, supportive services that transition them out of that situation and into uh, independence as well, but also retaining a, a connection to your programs as they continue to live their lives. Yes, I mean, I, you need that strong um, community support, I think, to be able to maintain your recovery. Um, I think the problem with addiction is it's a community problem. It's not necessarily an individual problem. So we need community support. There's self-help groups that are out there that we encourage people to attend, be it NA or Narcotics Anonymous or Alcohol Anonymous, um, because I, you need that support network 
um, because it's very difficult and it's very challenging and you want to build those what we call recovery resources. Now the 2,000 2, people that you serve annually, about 70-75% of those individuals are men. Correct. Why is addiction so seemingly concentrated amongst men or is it just the treatment is concentrated I, amongst men? I think there's better access for males than females. There's not enough um, female treatment slots available. So I think that's part of the problem. Oftentimes the female is responsible for the, the children um, and there's not a, very many children, women and children programs. Um, so I think there's more people, more males in prison than there are females in prison. And there are, a lot of the people that are in prison are in prison because of a substance problem right. or alcohol. But the other issue is that is that uh, appropriate care is not available. What would that appropriate care look like for women as opposed to men? I think that, I, I think really a place where if the woman is responsible for their children, that their children can come and be taken care of and the woman can really work on her issue, her drug and alcohol treatment issues, her where she needs to be with her treatment plan, knowing that her kids are safe. Um, and then also teaching them good parenting skills because you want to stop, stop that family cycle of, you know, passing your addiction down from one member of your family to another, which often happens um, in the low income communities. Um, you know, if you look at high crime rates, things like that, it's often the family cycle. Such important work, so important in terms of the <coughs> partnership to ensure that we have a healthy civil society here in the Lehigh Valley, here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, in Allentown, and in other surrounding municipalities. Uh, John Dylan Snyder, thank you so much for sharing this organization's work with us, and thank you so much for your insight.